to uh, quite a bit, I would say, in the last uh, year plus, uh, where everyone has gone online in order to uh, find other people, find their community, as well as just the growing number of people who are on YouTube, Twitch. Uh, what is it like to be in a virtual community? How do you manage a virtual community? Uh, and uh, how do you, how, how does this all begin? What is the future? Where, why are these things happening? And of course, I'm here with, uh, I would consider two of the best people around to talk about uh, virtual communities. Why don't you introduce yourselves and uh, let the people know uh, where you're from? So my name is Malika Lim Eubank. I am the CEO of Hyper, which is a channel on Twitch on YouTube and a bunch of other places on social media. We have billions of Giphy views for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. They're um, amazing. Because they're, my... they're excellent gifts. That's why. Well, or I just have a big cartoony face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm a, also a game designer. And uh, the mission here at Hyper is to, of course, uh, play games, have a good time, build a community around shared common interests, but also to uplift undercreated voices in front of and behind the camera. So that's what we do here at Hyper. And I'm Kaylee Bray. I am a producer uh, at Hyper as well. I also am the community manager for uh, AMC's Walking Dead official Twitch channel. Uh, and I assist with managing the community at Hyper as well. And I'm uh, also the executive producer of Tabletop at uh, Pixel Circus. That so is, many things. That yeah, is I huge. Do a lot. That is huge. Uh, so I guess the, the first question is uh, what uh, Hyper, Hyper obviously is, you have such a huge community, you have very passionate fans. What about Hyper uh, do you think brings, creates a community? Like how do, you, how, do you, how do you bring people in who are more than just uh, watchers, but like how do you, what makes them a community? Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I feel like I can't speak for the community because they, a lot of them are in the chat room right now and I just wanna say hello and I love you and I'm so hyped. You guys are amazing. Um, but in practical sense, this is the advice I give to a lot of community managers and people that manage brands and other channels is having a zero tolerance policy for hatred, any kind of hate speech, especially against any protected group, whether you're queer, person of color, immigrant, disabled, whatever. We just have zero tolerance for that. And then people kind of get the sense of, oh, if I'm a jerk, maybe I'm not welcome here. Uh, so that's, that's a big part of it. And then after a while, once you've set that tone, the community starts to kind of uh, moderate itself a little bit. And then like-minded people, the birds come and they flock together. Absolutely. Oh. Getting to see people uh, getting to see that in real time, those rules being enforced and that that spirit, that energy of that community being very clear about that, it encourages it encourages people to really lean in and invest in those values, which I think is really awesome. Yeah. Uh, what do you think are like like what are, what are your what are your sort of like pillars of the community? Like what is what are the things that you stand for? Like, how do you how do you know like where those lines are being drawn? Because it sounds like you have you know the rules. Like people know going in like how things are going to be done. But like, how do you how do you create those pillars? These are the things that we stand for. And then how do you enforce those? Well, Kaylee and I we just revamped our community guidelines, so we have our own community rules. And then at Hyper, I have a set of guidelines for everybody who works here, um, because it's very easy to say we have a zero tolerance policy for hatred, right? Like certain words, they're just not tolerated here. Bye bye. However, I also want to foster a community where we can learn and ask questions and evolve and accept our mistakes and move forward. I'm not a perfect person, I'm gonna mess up. I learn things from my own community. And so it's actually pretty challenging to kind of navigate that tightrope. However, if we're coming from a good place of a place of kindness and care, you know, we may mess up, but if we kind of see that mutual place of love and kindness and respect, uh, I think we will, you know, we'll be on the right path. 
And when we were building out the, our pillars of the community, our community guidelines, things like that. I mean, when we, we ended up just simplifying it to two things and it's be nice and don't be mean. And, and that was, you know, that was mostly Malika, but it's, <laughs> I think that, I think that, that distilling community values into those two things can be really helpful. And at the, at the end of the day, that's really what we want from a community. Absolutely. Just be nice. Don't be mean. Yeah. And, um, you know, why make it that simplistic? And a big part of my community value is accessibility. Uh, I'm an immigrant to this country. English isn't my first language. Uh, there may be, um, challenges to understanding too many rules. So, you know, kind of taking the lessons I learned in kindergarten, I care language, you know, be nice, don't be mean. And then we have some examples of this is considered mean in my community. For example, mm -hmm. making fun of a certain group of underrepresented marginalized people, right? So that, that's kind of, in some ways, it's really easy. And other ways, you have to find that nuance. Absolutely. I, I think that you, uh, as your community has shown, uh, they're very positive, very caring, compassionate. How do you uh, sort of like push uh, a spotlight on that? Obviously, we're, we're already seeing uh, a lot of your good work in the chat as it is, but like, what do you do to sort of like give, give thanks or to uh, sort of like give back to those who are helping to maintain uh, this positivity that you have worked so hard to make. I wanted to have a quick discussion about labeling. Um, sure. As like a young queer person, I always felt kind of nervous, like joining the Gay Straight Alliance at school or, you know, even um, like Asian Student Union or something because I didn't choose these things. This is just who I am and how, how I was born. I'd rather like join art club because I, I chose to make art. I didn't choose to have this skin color or this, you know, orientation or whatever. Uh, that being said, I learned something from my own community. I had a fan approach me at a convention and she told me, hey, you know, I'm transgender. I love your community. However, I would like to see more LGBTQIA representation on your channel. And I was actually taken aback because I'm like, I can be so gay. <laughs> like, uh, how, how do I make it more obvious? And then also many of the, the faces we um, put on our channel, I'm not a single streamer. We're a little bit more of a network. Uh, they are also part of the LGBTQIA quilt bag umbrella. And I was like, how do I, you know, I want to make it more obvious, but I also don't want to like sensationalize or use it as marketing. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. So thank goodness on Twitch, we have these community tags. And one of the tags that we use is LGBTQIA. I don't know how many letters. You uh, got Twitch it. And then there's plus. And plus. <laughs> yes. Um, um, and out of all the tags my channel has ever used, that is the one that has led to most new followers, new viewers, uh, even new subscribers, because it shows the queer community is looking for like-minded people uh, and they wanna know that they're welcome and they're, they're encouraged to live their true selves in my community. So one thing is to actually use those labels, even though um, I personally have this relationship of, well, this is just who I am. Absolutely. Uh, Kaylee, you work on, you work on a number of different projects as well mm -hmm. that are out there. So how do you see the communities between the different projects that you're, you're working on and how do you, uh, what are some of the things that you do differently for one community to another? Or is there just sort of, how do you, how do you interact with different communities? Just put it I think that way. Yeah, and it definitely depends on on what those communities exist for. Because that for something like The Walking Dead, it's a really specific community. They are there in united by a passion for a really specific thing, one thing, and then it kind of branches out, and you you build a community around that, and you learn more about the people who are part of the community, and you make more things. As opposed to something like Hyper, where it's it's more community for community's sake, and that you approach those things differently. And, and while you know, we have a lot of aligned interests as many communities do, there's just a, 
there's a different approach to being a member of a community that is there so that a community can exist versus something that's built around something specific that's like I could take or leave the community I'm here because I like this thing and so encouraging people to be a part of a community in addition to liking this thing versus helping people build the kind of community that they're looking for it's again it's subtle but and honestly you need you need most of the same things for both whether uh whether you're like openly talking about using those same strategies um but honestly they're not that different a healthy community is a healthy community you just you, it just depends on the framework that being said i think we have a lot of creators and uh new and veteran in the chat room. And I want to address um, taking time to journal and even write out with yourself or if your channel is also a team, uh, your key pillars is really helpful and amazing. One thing that I learned from, uh, we collaborated with Saban Brands with the Power Rangers IP. It was amazing. We did a whole 25 week uh, show with them. And that brand told me our four pillars are friendship, diversity, teamwork, and fitness. And to narrow it down, like, oh, okay, I got that. And so when we approach uh, that community and welcome that into ours, we realize, you know, it's encouraged to highlight those four pillars. Um, a big thing at the in the hyper kind of mission statement, we have this thing called the Thumper Creed, is um, welcoming everybody to the table. However, you have to earn your place to stay. So we have all sorts of diverse people and not only skin color and religion and age and gender and, and everything like that, but also just different political opinions um, and ways of life and think different ways of thinking. That's fine, that's awesome, but you have to kind of accept everybody else. And if you're, you know, we have some no-nos on our don't be mean list. And if it's ever made personal, if it's, hateful if it's threatening we just don't don't tolerate any of that kind of behavior makes sense absolutely um i'm seeing in the chat there's a couple of people who are saying that they're very new to streaming and obviously like the communities that you're both working with are obviously huge communities like thousands of people who are there but as a new streamer like what are some of the things that you can do uh, to help start to create that healthy community uh, of people so you don't like breed toxicity or that it's not just sort of like a hate fest as you're going into it. I think it starts with you. And I know Kaylee and I, this is a strong value at my company, but also a strong personal value is it starts with you and your goals. And I think, you know, new creators like, open up the journal and write it down or type it or put it in your phone. I think you need to make it concrete so that you can repeat it to yourself. So that when you are at moments of what do I do, revisit those goals you outlined uh, in the beginning and, and even like free journal on what is my dream community? What are the values we exemplify? Um, we have a huge reckoning right now in new media where brands are going from uh, style and color palette and language to values. It doesn't matter what col color scheme your channel is. It doesn't matter what your logo <laughs> looks like. What ma matters is those values. So if you can outline those first, what is your purpose? What is your place? Label those things. That's extremely helpful as a starting point. Uh, and then once you realize what you are, you realize what you're not. And then you can create some boundaries. How do you, I think boundaries are, are super important when it comes to creating communities and uh, making sure that like people know like what this space looks like. Uh, Kaylee, how do you, how do you manage boundaries within your communities so that you're not cutting off people? Like uh, obviously this is the internet, a lot of people love to do, you know, what they want to do. How do you, how do you keep it welcoming, but still keep those, those walls up, keep those boundaries and 
sort of create those spaces for people. And it, I, it depends on specifically for, especially for Walking Dead, uh, it depends on our host's comfort too. Um, I remember having a conversation with one, uh, all of our hosts about what their comfort levels were and what their boundaries were so that I can make sure that I stick to those, it's very important. Um, and uh, one of our hosts uh, is gay. And occasionally we will have people coming into chat being like, are you gay? That guy's gay, gay, okay. And, and our host is very comfortable being like, yes, yes I am, welcome. We're talking about The Walking Dead. And I love that because we, we get to establish that boundary of this is a true fact and we're not going to accept hate here. We are inclusive and welcoming and if you are looking to shock people or uh, create conflict, that's not something that's welcome, but we can say it with a smile. And then of course, you know, with hate and things like that, we, we then are very, very quick. We have wonderful mods who are, and we're able to be very demonstrative about making all of that go away and uh, redirecting lines of questions or conversations, just being very open about what our goals are for the community, reinforcing those in chat constantly, in conversation, on stream, so that the members, and now we've got members of our community who say it before I do, who say it before the mods do. Malika, same question. How do you, how do you, do, I mean, what do you do? Like, how do you see boundaries as a way to create a community where you're often want to put as few boundaries as you can between you and your audience? I mean, it's tough and it changes and it depends from person to person and situation to situation. Um, we are living in a moment right now in the world that is extremely lonesome, right? We're a global pandemic, we're quarantining, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> um, and, and we're trying to stay as safe as possible for the greater good. Um, that being said, you know, a lot of content creators didn't realize that they signed up, especially on Twitch when you're live, that uh, people are calling you to be an advocate, uh, are calling you to be like a therapist, all these things that I don't have professional training for. And so I either facilitated obtaining professional training. So for example, I had a conversation with my community with Dr. B. Uh, he's a fantastic uh, tabletop gaming advocate and psychologist. So we could have that conversation because I'm not going to speak from that. I'm not a no faux therapist, right? Uh, or, or, you know, if you're not equipped, uh, calling that out. Um, since becoming a more uh, public persona, I've had to live a life of more radical transparency because as a YouTube creator, you can edit things out on a, twi a Twitch stream when you're streaming one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours a day or more, five, six, seven, eight, eight days a week. It feels like eight days a week sometimes. Um, you just have to be really certain of what you're okay with and what you're not. You know, uh, for example, there's been a lot of atrocity that's going on right now in the news. And I had, like, like I said, journaling is so helpful for me. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanna highlight that I go to regular therapy and I work specifically with a therapist whose specialty is to work with um, activists so they don't get burned out because I have been, I feel that personal you know, call to represent this community on Twitch. Uh, but what I was trying to say is I'm constantly, uh, I do my morning pages and I decide how am I feeling today and what can I take on? Because every day we have different levels of commitment to, you know, these lifelong fights. Absolutely. Like, I think it's trying to figure out like what, what that is for for everyone as we start to put uh put our communities together as well as just you know how how we seem to manage i think you bring up a really good point also you know speaking of dr b uh mental health uh within sort of the the streaming 
uh, the creator community, I think, is is a really important thing as well. And so, how do you manage that within the communities where you do have a lot of people who are coming in, or how do you manage when someone like starts trouble or someone someone needs help out there? Like, what is what are some of the things that you do, or some of the lessons that you've learned uh, while putting this all together? I think Kaylee and I are both huge fans of Take This. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they're they the pros, you know? They have PhDs, you know, respect yeah. that. I'm not smart. Let the experts doctor. be the experts. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they have zeroed in on mental health concerns in the gaming community, both in physical and online spaces and with an international context. How cool is that? You know, I'm American. I'm very like, you know, we, we think we're the center of the world. So uh, what I love about their website, they have a list of so many resources. Uh, that's incredible. I've also, um, I, I try not to message people on a personal private basis as much uh, because that starts to erode my boundaries with my community. Um, but I have, um, you know, sometimes you just feel like a, a level of concern for maybe a couple individuals or your community at large. I do like to highlight uh, to people I worry about and just the world in general, um, build up your support network and that there are limits to what I and even my online community can provide in an online space. You know, and, you know, like it will not, my community as positive and great and awesome as they are is not going to replace feeling safe at home or feeling like loved or support it's deeper, deeper issues that need um, constant and maybe even professional support. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, one of my best friends, she's a, a psychologist too. And I always talk to her. I go to her for advice because I'm like, you have the PhD. Uh, and she said, realize there, there's a limit to what you can do in an online space and that some people may be in a, a situation where they need consistent professional help. And that's just outside of my capacity to provide. And, and expressing that is my form of sharing my love. Absolutely. Uh, Kaylee, uh, any, uh, obviously we have, we have gone through a lot of tough times recently. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a pandemic, uh, what's going out in the news right now? Like how has community changed now that, or what have you seen change within the community uh, since sort of like uh, the lockdown? has started happening? People immediately went online. And I think that that's, it's something that not everyone is equipped to understand, especially if being online is a new thing. I noticed a lot of brand new Twitch users, people who I only kind of know how to use Facebook. I don't understand how to subscribe to Twitch. My cousin's nephew's SAT tutor sent me here and now what do I do and so there's a lot more education on on internet etiquette that um is it was new I think that a lot of people take for granted if you spend a lot of time in online spaces in twitch specifically and lots of other places where there's just like a an underlying etiquette and a way of doing things and a behavior and a lot of things that go unspoken and suddenly realizing oh no these are things that we we need to educate people about and we need to describe to people and 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 make it very clear so that you know we can say well, maybe don't tell me your your name and your address and your age on the internet where 20,000 people can see you uh mm -hmm. little things like that and so a, a brand new just demographic of people joining these communities, which I think is really great because it exposes so many different kinds of people to so, to so many other different kinds of people. But you got to teach them how. Right. And what are some of the lessons? What are some of the first things that you've talked to people about uh, when they're getting online or when they're coming into your community? Uh, because uh, creating intros or like that sort of like that, that warm smile and that uh, helping hand 
to greet people as they come into a community is is very important. So like, what are some of the things that you you think about when someone is first uh, coming coming into your community? I, uh, it's, it's always pointing them in the direction of the thing that I think is going to make them the most happy. And people are, people love to be asked questions about themselves. They love to know that someone is interested in them. And so being able to point them in the direction, you know, walking dead, it's easy. We know what they're here for. And, uh, but pointing them in, in the direction of, are you creative? Do you like to make things? Which, which things, which part of the community, help me, help me curate this community for you so you get the most out of it. And then giving them access to the wider range of what we have to offer as well. Showing them what live Twitch content has to offer. Uh, it's, always, it's always very rewarding for me. And I've noticed that, that that's the thing that hooks people and, and, and gets them in. Malika, same thing. Like, how do you how do you bring people into the community? How do you how do you welcome them? Uh, what are some of the first steps that you do? Well, if they have a cool username, you gotta call it out. Oh, absolutely. I have seen some cool ones uh, or clever or punny. Oh my god, I love a pun. Love a pun. <laughs> uh, dad joke generator right here. That was my first job in the games industry, FYI. Um, but. What I think is incredible about live streaming and Twitch is appointment based viewing, mm -hmm. appointment based viewing, um, because those appointments can become appointments for fun, appointments for friendship, uh, appointments for coming together in triumph, tragedy, festivity, and so much more. That is what is incredible. You know, that appointment based viewing, you kind of had that when, you know, everybody was watching, I don't know, Breaking Bad, like a hit new show. And then the next day at work, you're all talking about like what's happening, but it's even better because it's in real time and it's in the chat room. And so that's what I like to highlight with new viewers, because people don't realize why it's special to watch and interact live. They're like, oh, you know, maybe they, there's a time zone thing. Maybe I'm busy, maybe I'm doing the dishes or whatever. Um, I really emphasize the best way to enjoy my channel is to watch it live. And so that's an educational process I always try to give uh, to my, my viewers. You're both very talented content creators. Uh, you both, uh, you, you, know, you know how to, talk to people, you know how to create uh, interesting stories. Uh, what do you do, uh, or what would you say to content creators who are listening right now? Uh, how, do you, how do you keep the audience engaged? Because a lot of the things that you're talking about now, you know, not everyone's gonna be making a break bad for <laughs> like every time they go online. Uh, but, you know, like how do you, how do you keep, keep people like sort of like in the flow or feel like they are being hmm so Kaylee is also a really talented actor and I I've learned so much from just being near her and you know actors have this thing where you have to kind of know your type but in the context of being a live content creator, you kind of have to know your type and what are your goals, mm -hmm. right? So some people are here to just slay at a competitive game and you go slay, like slay like crazy, you know? And if you are representing a community along with like killing it in a competitive game, if you're a professional or upcoming esports player, that's awesome. That's all you have to do, you know? Uh, just because you're also a person of color who's trying to slay, like you don't have to engage in that conversation if you're just like, nah, here, I'm here to, to like top score and leave, you know? Uh, so you have to kind of understand who you are um if you're just trying to um like there are a lot of comedians mm -hmm. like on twitch they're amazing so you're gonna have a different goal you you know your type like i'm here to make people laugh and i'm gonna have a good time too and so i think that's where you are and what's cool about twitch 
is especially with the help of some outside social media and, and some smarts and some savvy and um, taking advantage of like Google Trends and stuff, um, that community will find you rather than you chase the community or what you're supposed to be. Kelly? Yeah, I absolutely, I, I agree with that. Uh, the concept of if you build it, they will, they will join you. And if you, if you are enjoying making your content, if you are passionate about your content, that's, they can smell it. Everybody knows. And, and uh, usually you see that from your community. Like if, if you are passionate about something, your community will be passionate right back at you. They'll reflect it back at you. And uh, also hyper is incredible at uh, interactivity and finding new ways to, uh, get community members engaged and invested and interact with the streams live to feel like a part of it. But, you know, there's, there's a difference between, oh, I'm going to throw a couple of polls up, or I'm going to uh, let you have access to this, you know, wild emote, which is great. And we do that too, but, but also just being there with the chat and having community, uh, events or, uh, engaging on the discord, just, letting people feel seen and feel included and and being really open and honest about the value that your community brings to you as a content creator people want to be appreciated and and if your community appreciates you as a content creator the best you, the best thing you can do for your community is is be honest about how much you appreciate them and how do you go about like showing like that appreciation like what is what are some of the things that you do for the community to sort of like uh, energize the core, I guess would be like one of the one of the things that people usually talk about is sort of like get people excited, do something that like really like gets people to to cheer and to like yeah we, we you know be thankful that they're a part of the community. Um, I don't want to like turn on the waterworks right now, but I'm, I'm speaking from the bottom of my heart right here. Okay, I give my time. Mm -hmm. Quality mm -hmm. time is my love language. I give my time and I speak from the heart and I try to use my brain about it, but not always. Sometimes just the heart first. <laughs> and another thing is charity drives, raising money for causes I care about and I know they care about. Also listening. If I learn something from somebody in my community, maybe, maybe I was called out. I'm, I'm going to highlight that person. I'm going to thank them. I'm going to show that I'm listening and I'm learning. And oftentimes, you know, uh, I, I live with anxiety disorder, so I'm always second guessing myself and uh, what to do, what to do. Go to community. Be honest about it. Absolutely. You know, how should we do this? This or that? What do you think? Or, you know, for example, a lot of brands have been called out for uh, you know, just kind of this token appreciation of Black History Month, Asian History Month, you know, it's all, ugh. I, uh, and I was getting real nervous about it. And I finally just went to my Discord community and I said, hey, especially uh, the Black members of my community, what are your expectations of Hyper for Black History Month? What do you want to do? You know, do, I'm not going to write the agenda. And they expressed to me how much they've been reeling from all the news, the recent events, the social media. They said they wanted healing. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like that's awesome. So I hired uh, another member of our community, a uh, wonderful black female healer to run meditation workshops privately in my discord for my community. But they told me they wanted healing, you know? So it's, it's wrong and presumptuous of me and it stifles my own personal growth to like always prescribe this is what we're doing absolutely i uh um i think that there is i th i think that there's so much that people i think the communication is really underrated i think that that having a suggestion box open and then listening to the community and highlighting suggestions that you then are, if you if you have the resources or the ability to enact some of those suggestions, that's the best way to energize your community because then they feel not only are they 
you know, just on the outside, but now they can lean in, they can engage, they can feel invested in whatever you're making and in the community that you're building. They're, they're citizens of it now. It's, they're not just, they're not just audience members, they're active participants. And I think that's really important and it makes people feel good. Absolutely. Uh, obviously you're, you're both, uh, very engaged. You have a lot, again, thousands, thousands of people that you have to sort of like look over, make sure that everyone is uh, sort of being taken care of. Like, what are some of the tools that you use? Uh, maybe it's like software, maybe it's a spreadsheet. I don't know. Like, what are some of the things that you use in order to uh, manage your communities or make things easier with so many people? Uh it would be wrong of me to not take this moment to thank my moderation team. I was going to say the mods. The mods. The mods. The mods. Oh, the mods. They're I, magicians. They're, oh. <laughs> Every single moderator, I want to buy you the baked good or something of your choice and send it to you somehow. I don't understand. I just, I'm very grateful for mods, all of them. But our, our moderation team is, is so, they're so wonderful. I mean, they, they have taught me things. So, you know, in some ways your community is a mirror of you. As a game designer, I'm a computer nerd. I love programming. And so some of our mods are very talented developers and they've developed tools to help themselves and each other um, update our overlays, uh, you know, keep track of information cataloging our shows like i can't take credit you know <laughs> i'm just like they're so cool <laughs> what do you think it takes to become a good mod like what are some of the like if someone right now in chat is like i want to you know i want to take up the mantle i want to like to be a good mod for my community like what are some of the things that they need to know uh in order to become a good moderator I guess active participation in uh, moderation uh, responsibilities, right? So, okay, you know to ban people who use this kind of language, uh, you know, you know to engage with people who are asking for help and maybe help those questions, but there's, there's a difference between somebody who is like, okay, I'll do that because they want to be closer to the content creator. And then there are other types of people who have like taken it personally and made it their personal mission to actively not only kind of enforce what needs to be done and carry out tasks, but back up and deeply understand the values behind why we're doing these things, why we're moderating in this way. Why are we trying to help people? Why are we trying to explain things? Yeah, I think a really important thing for for mod, people who are looking to mod for especially a specific community is they need to be huge fans of the community, but not necessarily of the content creators or the producers or the like the the on camera, the talent, right? It needs to be people who believe the best of the people that they are joining. They need it helps if they're already a member of the community so that they because a member of the community is going to understand the community so on a totally different level than even someone like me or Malika will. And having that like inside scoop from a moderator, I mean, that's gold. Absolutely. Um, obviously, you know, we, there's, there's a lot you've learned. Uh, there's a lot that's been happening. Uh, it's 2021 where, what do you see as sort of like the future of, of communities, online communities? What can we be expecting moving forward? What would you like to see uh, as we go into 2022? <gasps> We're not even through this year yet, Rob. Let's go, let's ah. go. We're just skipping what all of time? it. time? Time's not important, it's fine. <laughs> what is time anymore? Um, as I, you know, it's one thing to say, these are my goals. It's another thing to live them. So we've been on, Hyper's been on Twitch for over half a decade now. And what is emerging 
and needs to be a part of the conversation and is a growing part of the conversation is intersectionality. Mm -hmm. You know, I have lived through certain things. Uh, I have both privilege and I've also been underprivileged. And understanding both allows me to, you know, reach across the aisle. And even though I might not live, you know, I might not be a certain skin color or I might not live with a certain disability. Um, using my lived experiences to, I don't want to say like use your lived experiences and necessarily relate, but to remind yourself that you need to be a good listener. And, and so less canceling and calling out and more calling in and a growing, a growing awareness of you can be both. You can be bothered by a situation, but still appreciate a certain thing. You can have a problem with a person or, but recognize their work is good. You know what I mean? So it's um, making space for feeling multiple emotions and that's okay. I agree. And I think that there's, uh, and you touched on this a little bit, Malika, but I learned so much just by being on Twitter and other just online spaces and being exposed to other people who do have those different life experiences than me. Again, I have a very specific lived experience and uh, I appreciate so much the privilege of being in a space where people with other lived experiences can uh, educate me about those just by, just by being who they are and expressing themselves. And uh, I think that the more we we can curate spaces that allow for that kind of intersectionality and, and just that kind of diversity of experience, the, the better our communities will be and more people will learn and celebrate that. And more appointments, but not just, you know, for the doctor or for work, for joy, for celebration, for discussion, for growth. Um, you know, the technology is only becoming more real time and more immersive. So we need these other things to thrive as human beings. So like more of those kinds of appointments. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I don't wanna, we're, we're starting to run uh, out of time, but I wanna make sure that we can start to uh, put a spotlight on some of the other communities that you feel like deserve a spotlight because a lot of people in the chat obviously are are looking for a place. A lot of the people in the chat are are probably part of your community as well, and maybe some of the people in the chat are looking for their first community. So, where are some other places? What are some other uh, people that you think uh, are doing great in the world of creating communities or uh, places people can go to to understand more oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm a fan well, of so many people um gay gaming professionals hello thank you for hello. having us of course <laughs> anytime anytime and then we mentioned uh take this fantastic organization to learn and partner with also i've seen in the chat room any key a uh, fantastic organization um, I was a recipient of the Girls Make Games Scholarship uh, oh. when I was a game development student. So um, amazing organization to learn from. And a lot of people come up to me and they're like, I have a kid and all they do is play video games. What should I do with them? Well, if they're a girl, you can send them to Girls Make Games. They have wonderful educational camps. Um, and uh, I also want to say, if you're part of a marginalized group, please, please, please apply for scholarships. There are so many now. If you are upcoming streamer, if you want, want to learn how to make games, if you want to go to GDC, there are so many organizations that are gonna assure you that you are not alone and they're fighting for you. So that's, you know, it's kind of a good time to be alive and it's only gonna get better. I'm very optimistic. And uh, I'd also uh, add, I need diverse games. 
uh, as as a, a wonderful resource for finding a community, uh, especially if you are interested in gaming or games uh, and Jasper's Game Day as well. They have a wonderful Discord uh, with resources for mental health, for mental health for marginalized communities, uh, and then ways to join gaming groups and join games and uh, nerd out about games together. And it's it's really really lovely. And those are those are fantastic starter communities uh because they're just so inclusive and so friendly and that there's no barrier to entry you don't need to know something to be a part of it it's fabulous absolutely and to sort of like uh tie sort of put a bow on to everything what is one thing that you want to uh one lesson something that you've learned something that you want people to take away from what is the big thing you want everyone to walk out of here when it comes to community? I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. There is strength in many and you can do incredible things. Uh, just one obvious example is Hyper in the first, I think three years of our company raised a quarter million dollars for different charities. Um, last year, I went cross country in an RV to talk to Americans about Black Lives Matter, the upcoming election, and their struggles during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, those are all possible because of group movements. And so you can do really, really wonderful things if you take the time to, to grow your garden and foster a, a place where people want to learn, grow, and help each other. And start at the beginning and be, be really, really clear about the kind of community that you want to have and your goals, like we, were, we mentioned before, and the, the kinds of things you want to be able to achieve. It is possible, but incredibly more difficult to retroactively set those boundaries and those goals. Yes. It's so much easier and it's, it's very rewarding to see that grow organically uh, instead of having to then stop realize actually what you want and then try and re-educate the community that you've already started to build. Oh, I have one more thing. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. You got it. You got time. As a content creator, you are a leader and you set the tone. It's impossible to police a space and, and you know, I don't use the term safe space because I can't guarantee, I can't protect people that I want to, you know, there's always going to be monsters. But you can set the tone as a leader and uh, look to, um, there's a place called CMX Hub and there are local chapters for that. And then also the community manager summit at the game developers conference mm -hmm. uh, to connect with other community managers to understand their methods, their tips, their tricks, their techniques, the software that they use, um, because this is a, a new and rapidly evolving field itself. Absolutely. I feel like uh, community managers are going to become more and more important as we, as our communities grow, as the virtual worlds begin to grow, and as more people start to try to find their ways onto uh, different games, different communities, different streams uh, around different creators. So um, thank you. Thank you both so much. Uh, for being here, for sharing your information, your, your passion, your love for uh, community as well as creating uh, for uh, everyone in the chat. Uh, they probably already know, but please, if you can, share with them. Uh, how can they find you? Uh, how can they reach out? As well as if there's anything else that you might be working on that you would like to share. Sure. Uh, you can follow Hyper at slash Hyper RPG or Hyper underscore RPG on Twitter. Sometimes you just can't get the same username. I'm <laughs> hello underscore Malika on Twitter and Instagram. DMs are open. Send me the things. And um, I have this project that I just want to speak into existence to Do the it. Twitch front page and all those bots and everything. <laughs> I made this board game called Rainbow Superstar. It's about being a, a queer actor trying to get their name on the walk of fame. And as a player, you have the choice of whether or not you want to be out. And 
I kind of left it on the shelf and I feel really, really bad about that. So thank you, gay gaming professionals for inspiring me to maybe keep developing that game. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, much love. That's, that's what I have to say. And follow Kaylee, you should. <laughs> yeah, I, I post pictures of, of boots with dice in them uh, on my Twitter. You can follow me at Hop of Barbarian. Uh, I talk about all the different kinds of content that I make on there. Uh, and if you are a fan of The Walking Dead, Hyper is the production company for AMC's official Walking Dead Twitch channel. Uh, we are live five days a week. Uh, you can follow us on TWD Universe and of course follow Hyper. Come say hi to us in the Discord. It's it's a beautiful community. Uh, just Malika and the whole Hyper team as I'm just one of the newer members, but they have done, it is a pleasure to jump into that community and, and, and uh, engage it. So join us. They're, they're good, good beans. Hi y'all, I see you in the chat. Excellent, excellent. Thank you again for both being here. And thank you to the chat for being wonderful and amazing and all the hearts, and especially our mod team. Uh, up next, uh, we're going to teach you a little bit about music as we go into what virtual reality and education is going to look like in the future. Please stay tuned.